All right, let's go through that. Let's 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 open up that. But first, I think it's really worth emphasizing one thing you mentioned is that if you understand the market conditions, you can be unattached and less emotional about the deal, right? Typically, I mean, if you're buying a, a family home that you've been always dreaming of, it's kind of likely that you're going to start to build out projections in your mind of how good it's going to be to live there with your family and all that sort of stuff, which can allow you to pay more for the property because you're emotional about it. And by understanding the market conditions, you can be unattached. It helps you to be unattached and not have emotions in the whole buying process, right? Yeah, that's the biggest killer is, is human emotion. And I do say to people, as a valuer, I can't value human emotion, but as a property, I guess, uh, buyer yeah. in the market every day, you add on your analysis to, to what you believe the property is worth, but you also need to understand, well, who are you competing against? Because all your comparable evidence has sold uh, and the properties that are on the market, I mean, they're asking prices. We refer to them as toilet paper in that they don't really give you a true reflection of and what the property's worth, it's just a marketing ploy. There's asking prices, so yes, um, you've got your, your sale dev, sold evidence that's your best evidence for um, evaluation perspective. But what people miss out on is they get so caught up in that sold evidence to justify what they're willing to pay for a property that they're not actually taking into account. Well, that no longer exists, someone owns that, but there's still 10 other or nine other uh, buyers that miss out on that property that are now looking at this. That have been looking at properties in that region for a few months and they're getting frustrated with the whole process because they've you know, everyone's doing the same thing um, it's kind of like their baptism of fire into buying property and um, i always want to help people you know, what are some key ways to, to fast track that so you don't spend you know the industry standard seven months on market trying to find a property missing out on five and then emotionally paying you know at the hand of a trained sales agent what percentage of people actually end up going through that cycle and doing that? Like going through that exact process, not exact, but like a similar process of seven months looking, being frustrated and then emotionally buying. What percentage, like roughly would you say? 70. 70%, okay. 70%, easy. And um, even... So this pod is very timely and very important. <laughs> oh, it, it, it's always the case in every single market um, mm. throughout my career, but it's just, it's human emotion. So that's what I love about stock charts and markets is that you can actually track you know, human emotion. You see it um, rising through those times of prosperity and then when there's uncertainty or fear in the in the, mar in the media, you see it dropping, right? And mm -hmm. then those times when they are dropping, uh, they're the best time to be buying into. But um, I yeah. guess that's, that's market psychology. Is there like a chart that, an overall chart that you use and people may use for the overall trend property prices in Australia or how property is behaving, like one chart, like, you know, have you got the S&P 200 and all that sort of stuff? Like, is there a... Uh, yeah, there's... Um, I can track charts. I used to track sort of the real estate investment trusts, some of, some of the major real estate investment trusts, but a lot of them are based around commercial property holdings, not okay. residential. Yeah. Um, so, you know, but even still, it gives you a bit of an insight. Property lags the stock market because it's stock market can be more um, or it fluctuates a lot more because it's easier buying and selling lower price of entry so you're getting those more emotional investors so to speak mm -hmm. um, that go into it and you can see them as the leading indicators even if you go further into the crypto side of things where that's also a leading indicator to me if that's tanking because property is like look Slower. at it lower yeah, it's like a big barge, right? Yeah. Where yeah. it takes a while to turn around, and that's what I love about it too, because it's more secure and then mm -hmm. um, slower moving, but more, yeah, more secure. Yeah, yeah. And then you know, your crypto is kind of like your little tinny, around <laughs> 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 yeah. right everywhere. Yeah. And then um, yeah, same, same with sort of the small. Stocks. And then your S and P's like they're just a regular size boat. Yeah. In between the tinny and the and the the barge. Yeah, you go yeah. offshore, go fishing on those ones. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The analogy is like <laughs>